Howdy ho stampers! Welcome back to my studio. This is Deb Valder. I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and today I'm going to show you how to do a tie-dye card. It's really elegant. It's very, very pretty. Um, I used a window sheet underneath but you don't have to. It's a throwback from the 70s. It's so much fun to make. <clears throat> Excuse me. So let's get started because we've got a lot of pieces to do on this. <clears throat> I want to show you how to do, um, or I want to show you the watercolor paper that I used. It um, has five sheets in it and what I do to maximize it is I cut it into um, four and a quarter by five and then I use the extra strips. I'll show you that in just a moment. But our watercolor paper is um, a little bit thicker than regular cardstock and it absorbs the water very well. So it's good to use with our water-based products like our spritzers and um, our aqua pens, blender pens. Um, it really lends itself to water products. So this is the, pa the paper that we're going to use. I cut it down to five and a quarter by four and um, I'm going to grab uh, this right here and this is just um, an old piece of cardboard underneath and then my grid paper on top and the reason I'm using something underneath is because um, this can get a little bit messy because it soaks through things and um, we just want to make sure nothing gets ruined underneath so now what I'm doing is I'm just taking some washi tape and putting it on the very very ends I'm gonna not put it there because um, you'll see why in just well I'll show you um, for the, for the end piece right here, you're going to actually see through that. So I put a piece of washi tape here, a washi tape here, and a washi tape here. And you can do it wherever you want. Just know um, that if you if you do cut it down to five and a quarter by four, that you are going to see these little spots right here. You can actually um, cut it a little bit bigger and then cut it down with your cutter. But I just think that's a waste of, of um, paper. So by maximizing this, I can get um, quite a few cards out of just one sheet. So that's what I do. So that's why there's nothing right here. But you do want to take and tape it down because otherwise your, your paper's going to curl. And when you do that, your re-inkers are going to, the, the ink from the re-inkers are going to just roll off the table. And you don't want that to happen. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get out my aqua pen and it's filled with water. And I'm just going to take and wet my, uh, I'm just squeezing it, getting some water on here. And I'm wetting my, my paper. Okay, just like this. I'm just making it nice and wet. Now you don't want to get it too wet, but um, just wet enough. I'm just making sure the whole thing is covered. I'll go this way, and then I'll go this way, just to make sure the whole thing is, is definitely covered. You can use your um, spritzers also. We have um, just these little spritzers from Stampin' Up. Here we are. And um, you can use these also just to spritz it to get it wet, but I like using my aqua pen for this one. Right? And, and you, you fill that spritzer with water also. Now, here's the fun part. This is going to be the tie-dye part. So I'm, on this one, I'm going to take and use three um, ring, ink refills from Stampin' Up. So I'm going to start with my Daffodil Delight. I prefer to use um, the light color first and then go to my darker ones, um, but you can do it either way. Now, this is what I was telling you about your paper curling. You want it to try to be as flat as you can. And uh, then you just take and you just drop your re inkers on there. I'm going to run and grab a paper towel and the next color I'll do will be my Melon Mambo. And what I'm doing is just filling in the spots that didn't have color before. And my last color I am going to take, see how it just kind of dissipates and just, it's just so pretty. I was doing one with uh, Blackberry Bliss the other day, and now I'm using our new 2015-17 uh, in colors. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? So I'm just going to let that run for a little while um, because I want as much of the white to, to, um, to uh, fill in. And then I'm going to take just a paper towel and blot it. And then what you'll do is you'll set this aside. So now I'm just going to take this. Now be careful because it's going to come through and you don't want your hands to get all dirty. See how it comes through so fast? Just take and blot it a little bit, just to let it um, dry a little bit faster. And isn't that pretty? Figure out what we can do with that. And now I'm just going to take and set this aside. So let's, for the sake of doing my video, have one that's already dried. And I have a couple of them here. Remember I told you that it, um, it uh, uh, one piece of paper can do three cards. So here's my three cards from that one piece of paper. And then I also have another strip there that I can use um, for something else. So these are my papers that I'm using. But the next thing that I need to do is to take 
um, my top layer of cardstock, and this one is also at four and a quarter by five. And um, what I'm going to do now is I need to cut out my butterflies. So let me grab my Big Shot. And my magnetic plate. Here's my butterfly die, and here's my paper. I've already cut out two of them. So here's my paper. Now for this one, I'm just going to lay it. You, you, you can lay them anywhere that you want, but I'm just going to lay this one right here and put my top plate on. Now, um, I always tell you that um, I have my top plate has happy faces on it. And what why I do that, I get so many questions about this, is because I never use the cutting edges on the happy faces. If I did it this way, okay, the cutting edges would be up, and I don't want it to cut into this plate. Because after a while, if you end up um, using, you know, this one for the cutting side, then um, you're not going to be able to see through it. So you're not going to be able to know if anything is moved or if anything is anywhere. So what I'm telling you to do is to grab yourself some extra plates um, because they're just um, they're just wonderful to have when they're when they're new looking like this because you can see through them. Alrighty, so now what I'm going to do is just run this through and we need to use our dryer sheets next. Now, another question I get quite a bit on my, my website is, um, why don't you do them both at the same time? Well, it's not too big a deal. Now, we really want this piece of paper, so don't throw it away. Um, it's not a big deal if you're using white cardstock pretty much because that's very thin paper, but um, when you're using um, our regular cardstock, that's pretty thick. And what you're doing is between the dryer sheets, and I have four layers here, plus your cardstock, it's putting a lot of pressure not only on this um, roller underneath here, but it's also putting a lot of pressure on your um your dies, so on the cutting dies. So um, you know what? It's just one little extra step. It's not a big deal. Um, just takes a few seconds longer. Okay, so there is my life altering uh, die. Now we're going to take this off. See? And if you use the non um, fragrant and dye free, there's no residue left over on your, your clear pads. On your cutting pads. Okay, so here's my uh, here is my butterfly, and remember we had a piece of it cut off, and now all I have to do is just lift this up, and we're going to use this on our card. Ta-da! Okay, I did the other ones ahead of time for you. So here we have. Um, our background, and I love this one. This is the one I was using the Blackberry Bliss with. It's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so we have that. That's the piece that we cut out. There's that one right there. And then here are these two right here. Okay, so I have this one, and I have this one. Now let me show you how I put it all together. The first thing that I'm going to do is to put my adhesive on the back of this. And I'm going to take use my silicone mat and some fast fuse adhesive and you want to make sure that you get it as close to the edges as possible because these edges are very very um, tiny uh, they're very um, well you see they're they're not a full sheet of paper so you don't want them to be lifting up okay and whoop, my fast fuse is giving me a little bit of trouble so I'm going to go over to here we go I just brought my snail in. And again, go all the way over to the edges because you just don't want this to lift up. So now let's take this piece right here and after we've added our adhesive to it, we're going to add it to our page, um, our, our sheet that we've um, tie-dyed. So you want to line it up as close as you can to the edges. Let's check and make sure. There we go. You can kind of manipulate it because um, these right here are um, so so fragile that, uh, like I said, you can just take and manipulate them. And okay, so there's there's that right there. And then what we're going to do is just take and put adhesive on the back of these. And the way I did that is to take my my um, uh, multi-purpose glue. And I love doing this. Now, don't squeeze a lot because you don't want a lot on here. But what you have to do is just kind of dot it all the way around so that 
And that's what's nice about the silicone mat. Everybody should have one of these. If you purchase my grab and go bag, it's in there. Um, see, I want to make sure that, especially these little spidery things right here, that you've got the glue on the end of them. So we're going to take this, turn it over, and just line up your, your, um, your butterfly. Whoops. Line up your butterfly, and then you're going to take and just turn it over and finish it off. And I'm going to show you one that I've already done, um, or started anyway. It's this one right here, and I've actually got the adhesive on here. So now another thing that you can do is you can take and put your adhesive, and that's what I love about this, uh, about this uh, multi-purpose glue, is that you can put it on ahead of time, and it, it doesn't dry totally. It makes it very sticky and um, kind of like, uh, so I did this one a couple of hours ago and um, I just left it out so that I could show you and that's the way it looks. So now we're just going to take, yes it looks beautiful on the back too, but that's because it all runs over. That's why I said make sure you have a protective coating on the back end of it. So that's the way it looks at this stage of the game after I um, have had adhered all the butterflies to it. Now isn't that beautiful? On, on any of these I could take and put um, a sheet of our, what I would do is I would take and adhere, this is a window sheet right here, and I could adhere that to this right here, then put my, my layer on here, and then add my butterflies to it. And in the original card, I absolutely love the way that looks. I just love it. It just, it, it just makes it um, look so much classier, I think. All right, so we've got that piece and that piece, and then all we have to do is add all of our layers to it and add a little bit of stamping just like this. Now I did do um, some pop dotting. Um, this layer right here, this black layer, um, I did um, adhere to um, the base card with um, some pop dots. I added a fork bow at the end and that is my card for today. It is called tie dyeing and it is beautiful. I hope you try it. It just lends itself to these um, dyes so well. And we have some more in our new catalog. If you need a catalog, get a hold of me. Um, it's the 2015-2016 and um, we'll get you one. Take care, have a great day, and let's come back soon.